Good afternoon, Krusty Crew. It is Sunday. I am on a hike with the dogs right now. So I thought this would be a great time to open up the vlog for today. I've spent all of today just kind of cleaning um, and working on the house as need be. So this is my first chance when I'm not. I'm listening to the new episode for And That's Why We Drink. Um, and that's really it. We're gonna go home after our hike and try to get some work done, eat some dinner, and the likes. So, let's finish our hike. Good morning, Krusty Crew. It is Wednesday and some drama is going down today at work. I can't, I, I'm not gonna talk about it, but just know I really want to talk to you about it because I greatly enjoy drama when it doesn't really involve me. So I want to talk to you about it, but I can't talk to you about it. So I'm about to leave for work and that shit's gonna go down today and it's not gonna be pretty. Um, and I'm going to be watching with popcorn from afar. From afar being the perfect point there. I just think it's entertaining. I, I don't watch enough trash TV anymore now that I don't live with my mom, you know. I'm not getting in my like trash brain rot TV anymore. So I need to watch what happens around me from afar. It's a toxic trait. I don't start drama, but I do observe it. So I'm about to put on the new episode of That Spooky, get to drive in, and hope for the fucking best today. Wish me luck. We will talk more later tonight when I'm home with the dogs. Okay, hi, good morning, Krusty Crew. Um, it is 9.01 and I still have not gone to work yet. I am just about to leave now, but I was just not feeling it today. I, see the problem was I let my chihuahua sleep with me last night, which is not something I normally do. She normally sleeps in her cage because that's like her room. That's, that's her safe space. And then I woke up this morning and she was also very snuggly and I just could not bear to be apart from her. So now we are an hour late to work. Um, I made a pumpkin spice chai with a pumpkin cream, or a pumpkin cream cold foam. Um, if anyone wants a recipe on how to make that even better than Starbucks, um, I have it. As someone who worked at Starbucks for three years, and I make it in a natural, low preservative capacity. Do not ever buy chai concentrate from the store. Just make it yourself. It's so easy. I promise. And it's so much better. Besides that, right now I am currently in the middle of two different audiobooks. So I'm still reading Little Rob by a Quick Amezzi, which I'm still loving. Um, one of the audiobooks is A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Fazal. That one, I, I feel okay about it. I'm realizing, so someone that I really respect gave this book a really, really good review. Um, so I just kind of went into it blind. And I now realize that was a poor choice on my part. So I think that the writing is really good. And I think that the character design is really good. But it's like a, like a kind of like a heist story, which is not my vibe. Um, I also last night just started Meeting Millie um, by Claire Ashton on Libby, so I'm only 20 minutes into that, so I don't know how I feel yet. I've not really been into, like, regular contemporary romance in a straight or sapphic capacity at all lately, so I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it, but I'm gonna give it a try because I'm waiting for my- I'm waiting for September which is going to be like a hardcore horror month for me. So we'll talk about my September TBR soon. But let's go to work now. Okay, y'all. So I just got out from the library and I have a problem. I have about nine books out from the library right now. So I think that this weekend is going to have to be catching up on my library TBR like no other. So I can show you one of the books as like a sneak peek, a preview into September's TBR. That is The Good House by Tana Reeve Dew. 
Um, the other two that I have you're currently sitting on top of, and these are just the ones that I just took out. I have six more at home. Um, and I took out a new Darcy Coates novel, um, it's an ocean horror, and then I took out the new Sylvia Moreno-Garcia novel, because they were both available. So, this weekend is gonna have to be for reading, and a ton of it. <laughs> like, physical reading, which I have not been doing a ton of lately. So, what is going to happen right now is I need to go to BJ's to renew my membership and then I need to go to the package store, I think. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to go to the package store. I was going to plan on, like, getting a little, a little drunk tonight, but I don't really love alcohol and it usually just makes me sleepy. So I think I'm going to skip on that. I was planning on going, but I'm not really looking forward to it. Um, so instead I'm going to go to my favorite burger shop and I'm going to get a burger for dinner and then I'm going to go home and I need to finish editing some chapters and then I need to just spend the rest of the night reading. So it's going to be a long night. Let's go run our final errands and then get some snacks because we're going to need it. Good morning and welcome to the world's worst lighting. Um, the sun is not up right now. It is, it's like 5.30 in the morning. Um, and we are going to go to the beach and do a nice sunrise walk. Um, I'm just feeling the need to do so. So we're going to do so. Um, I did just remember that I forgot Sades, so I have to go and grab her necklace, um, before we leave. But, other than that, um, I do have to toss Bug's sweater on because it's gonna be really chilly for her, but this is our last day with Addie. My brother's coming to pick her up this afternoon, this evening, after he gets home from his flight. And I'm very, very sad about it. This has been the first time I've felt normal in almost two months. So, I don't know. It's hard. It sucks. But, here's what it is. It'll still be Bug and I. So, we're gonna enjoy our, our last day of adventuring. Yeah! So, let me go grab Sades, and then we gotta hit the road, because we got like an hour drive. Okay, hello, Krusty Crew. It is Saturday. We have done our beach day, and today is the last day that we are going to have my dear sweet Addie Bear. My brother is coming to pick her up today once they get off their flight, and I just... I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot since having Addie for the week. I have learned a lot about where I was in terms of like tolerance um, for younger, more energetic dogs. 
Um, so I had Sadie, my senior, um, who passed for 14 years. I got her for Christmas, um, in 2009 and we have been together ever since. So when I got her, I was 10 years old. That was my last new dog up until this year where I was the age of 25. So Bug has been my first younger dog since Sadie and I didn't really know what I was going to be able to handle. I didn't realize the amount of effort I put into Sadie every day to make sure she was med medically okay was more energy than I would put in than just walking a dog. I didn't realize. You don't know when you are a, care a caregiver for so long. Um, I started like being a caregiver for her in 2020 when she started having like problems with her spine. Um, and they were all normal problems to be having in a senior corgi mix. Um, none of her problems were out of the ordinary. They were all to be expected. They are definitely something to be aware of when you get into the corgi breed or any long breed, honestly speaking. And I don't have any regrets in the paths that we took to take care of her or the effort that I put in to take care of her. But when you are so solely in like care taking or caregiving for a senior dog, you don't realize just how much effort you put into that part of it and therefore you can't put effort into other parts of owning a dog. Like doing all the caregiving tasks for her every day and putting all of the effort into her and then on top of that trying to take her for a walk which is which was like 10 minutes of very very slow walking and then me having to pick her up and put her in her carriage and pull her. You don't realize how much more effort that is when you have no comparison point. And I didn't have a real comparison point. So, so I decided to go with this thing towards the end of Sadie's days because I had a feeling that something was going to happen sooner rather than later. I didn't think what was going to happen was going to happen um, as quickly as it did. I thought that I was going to have a lot more time. But so I got a Chihuahua knowing that that was going to be a pretty low energy dog. You know, a dog that ultimately needs a lot of work and a lot of effort, as all dogs do. But it wasn't going to be the kind of dog that needs to run for five miles a day or do all that. I knew that her energy levels were going to be manageable for me. And now that I have her, they are beyond manageable to the point where it feels effortless and therefore it makes me not want to do anything like she's just bug is the perfect depression buddy she is very content to lay on the couch and snuggle underneath the blankets with me for 16 hours which i appreciate so incredibly like look at how sweet she is. Look at how good of a little depression buddy is. But that's the reality. This week has taught me that she can have a lot of energy, but she can't have a lot of an energy on her own. Like, it's not something that just comes to her. It's something that comes to her when she can bounce that energy off someone else. Like, normally when I would try to take this thing for a walk, we would walk for 10 minutes and then she would turn around and she would be like, let's go back home. I'm done. With Addie, we've walked two to three miles almost every single day. We did over two miles at the beach today and she was totally happy. We went on a three mile hike the other day and she outpaced Addie the entire time. So this just kind of tells me that Bug is going to feed off my energy. And, like, if I'm not giving the energy of, oh my god, I want to go for this walk right now, I am so hyped for it, that she's not going to be hyped for it. If she can feel, like, the fact that I would really rather just be at home 
she's also going to rather be at home. And I am not the hype person. I, I am not the hype person. I, uh, it's just not, it's not me naturally and it's especially not me now. So that sucks. But my week with Addie has kind of shown me that I can manage to have two dogs and I can manage having a dog that has naturally higher energy needs than I might naturally have. That that is something that I can manage. Am I the person who normally goes on a two to three mile walk five to six days a week? Absolutely not. At all of my hobbies, reading, writing, fabric crafts, like none of those things require a lot of physical activity. And yet I have loved every second of this week and hiking and going for walks and playing outside just just playing outside I didn't realize how much I missed playing outside because she hates grass and she doesn't like when things touch her especially when wet things touch her so so since we lost Sadie a month and a half ago we haven't really been outside even though I have a beautiful backyard and this week I've been outside with Addie constantly just hanging out, playing ball. And I feel like my mom and I agree at this point that I am not going to like walk into something and like burst my way into getting another dog. But we both have some feelers out into the world and I feel ready, not really emotionally ready. Like I feel like I could take care of another one. Do I really feel emotionally ready to do anything at this point like in life in general absolutely not but I now feel like I can manage to meet the needs of a dog that needs a little bit more than Bug does and I think that Bug really wants a companion and I think that having having a second dog has been really good for me this week I this is the first time I felt even like close to normal in almost two months. She has made me feel more normal, more like a person and less just like mush. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my eye out and if something comes my way or if something feels right, then I'm, I'm gonna go with it. Like I've already reached out to the rescue that I got Bug from um, and they've already talked to me about like an option and I told them no and I was like yeah he meets most of the criteria but something about when I when I saw Bug like I knew I knew she was it I knew that she was the one something was just like nagging at me even if I didn't feel super confident that that this was right I knew that she was the right choice that she was the one, if I was going to choose one, she was the one that I wanted. So I'm looking for like a kind of similar feeling, like just a, just a sense of knowing, I think. <laughs> I love that you can just see everyone. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, I've had a lot of epiphanies since having Addie. Um, I felt a lot better <laughs> physically <laughs> since having Addie um and doing a lot of walks and all of that so <laughs> ready catch for camera oh so close hi so yeah, so that's kind of where we're at right now and I don't know, I don't feel like I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel kind of vibes because there's not like, like there is no replacing the dog that you spent your entire life with basically. But I think there are things that I managed to do this week that made it feel manageable in a way that it hasn't so
Good morning, Krusty Crew. Yesterday, Memorial Day, I got a new tattoo. So I was getting stabbed for like five or six hours, give or take. And this was my first ever color tattoo. And I think this one's going to be my last just because I'm not a very colorful person. Like I like my black and, gr black and uh, white, just line art, just plain. This is like my general vibe, but this tattoo in particular was incredibly special to me. And I just felt like it deserved some color. And my artist did a fantastic job. I'm absolutely obsessed with them. So I'll show it to you like upside down, but hopefully I'll be able to actually show it to y'all like once I take the Saniderm off, cause right now the Saniderm is still on. Um, so this is my memorial piece for my dog Sades. Um, and I basically just sent a bunch of reference photos to my artist and I was like, I kind of want it like realistic, but like in an illustrative way, like not photorealistic, just I want it to still clearly be art. And I told them that I just wanted to make sure that there were ferns around it because Sades thrived in Maine and ferns, we are surrounded by ferns, like our yard like the tree line to the forest by our yard is just ferns and they were her favorite she loved to bounce through them so and then i walked in and they were like so did you know about the welsh mythology behind corgis and i was like no and they were just like oh well uh these little these little things right here they're little fairies because corgis according to welsh mythology um, used to pull carriages for like the fae to get into the fae realm and then I just started sobbing <laughs> and after I started sobbing I just did not want to film anything uh, I just wanted to like be there and be having a great time because my artist was super cool and I, I had so much fun I genuinely this was like the best tattoo experience I've ever had and that's not to shit on my artist who did my snail or my artist who did my Medusa um, because they are both wonderful and I'm obsessed with them. They're beautiful artists. That is to shit on the two men who did my other three tattoos. Um, they gave me horrible experiences. This one in particular, like we were just vibing. We chit chatted for like the entire session and it was so much fun. I had such a good time. So I had a great time. I got in some great social time and I got the most fucking gorgeous tattoo of my life. Uh, and I'm so happy to be able to look down at my arm and just like see her. It's such a comforting thing. So I'm feeling really great going into this week. Lucky is, cur is currently sitting behind me in the chair. So I'm like at the edge of the chair. So this week I really just kind of want to vibe. I kind of just want to rock my shit. And when I say that, I say that because I have some more events coming up. So I've had a really busy couple weeks, especially I had my brother's dog with me for like a week. Um, and I had so much fun with her. I loved having her. Like that was so much fun. And I told him, I was like, she can come back anytime she wants, like genuinely. I did a couple other things over the past weeks, but now I'm super swamped at work like my day job um, and I'm trying to finish up some stuff for my editing business and then I am going away to Massachusetts not this upcoming week but the next week and then the week after that my grandparents are coming up to see me and I have a show down in Portland so like shenanigans are afoot I just have a lot going on a lot of events planned so I really want to take this week to catch up on editing work and catch up on reading because I have a crazy library haul right now. Um, so I think to motivate myself, my next reading situation is going to be like going through my life, like a, doing a library haul scenario because um, it's just out of control right now and I have no regrets. So with that, we need to get going to work. Let's go make a coffee and head off to work. Hello, Krusty Crew. It is Wednesday, about 4.30. Um, and I have been such a busy beaver. 
Um, I've been doing so much at work. But I'm just trying to be a functioning person and I'm feeling like super disre dysregulated right now because of all the shenanigans going on at work and I'm just not feeling like okay at all. So I think what Bug and I are gonna do is we're gonna go take a walk. Um, I just had a mentor with a meeting with my mentor, which was wonderful. That helped a lot. So I think we're gonna go take a walk and then I will go oh, actually I'm going to make the dough for my bread first. And then we will go take a walk. And then I will make dinner and eat and just try to try to recenter myself after the fucking shit show that is my job right now. Um and the amount of dysregulation, like, it really causes me. So, let's go make some bread dough and then reset her and try our best to be a person. Also, let's do a progress update of my baby. I still have my Santa Derm on. Um, and she's, like, ink pooling, like, a little bit. But not a lot, honestly. Like, not as much as I really thought she was going to. So, yeah. Is she, I'll still be wearing this for another day. I have, um, I could take it off tomorrow. So, let's go get started. Ten hours later. One eternity later. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Good morning, Krusty Crew. It is Friday, and some epiphanies have been had over the last two days. So, first of all, let's do a tattoo check-in because I was able to take my Sanoderm off last night. So my baby is free to the world. Isn't she gorgeous? Isn't she everything? I'm gonna add a little bit more lotion to her before I leave for work today. She's already been lotioned twice today, but in this stage of healing, you can never be moist enough. The realization that I've had is that I, so it's not really a realization, it's more of a, I'm making a decision to deal with the problem now. I am the problem. I 1000% am the problem. And outside of like the structure of school, I have failed. I was a perfect student. I was a fantastic student. I loved everything about school. I loved high school, I loved college, I loved all of it because it gave me a very specific structure structure and routine and it set expectations and it set up checks and balances and points of failure. So if I wasn't on this task, I knew that I could go and receive assistance and I wouldn't have to like unhaul my entire existence or like really go through an explanation, I would just say, hey, I'm having a hard time. What can I do next? What what can we do to figure this out? Um, and I can't do that anymore because it's like, hey, I'm having a hard time. Oh, what do you mean? What are you having a hard time with? Oh, crap. Now I have to explain everything to you and I just don't want to. I just don't want to explain my wants and desires to the people in my life. Even though I love them. I love the people in my life. I love my family. I love my friends. I love them. But divulging my hopes and dreams um, to others is scary and hard. And I don't like doing it. So 
I am the problem here because I don't have those checks and balances and that like support system like built in anymore I just I'm failing I have been failing I graduated in December of 2020 and I've been failing since then entirely so because I don't have that system that I was built to know and understand and work with it. So now I have to build my own system. And I am going to do that in a semi extreme fashion. And I'm gonna say this and everyone's gonna be like, Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Do not bring up your weight loss journey. And this is not a weight loss journey in any capacity. <laughs> Let's be honest here. It will never I will never be a weight loss journey person ever again. I have too much trauma. I have too severe of eating disorder tendencies. So I just, my body is not my biggest problem here. It's my brain. It, it, it's in here. So I am modifying the 75 hard challenge to fit myself. And basically what I'm interpreting, interpreting it for myself is 75 days of me putting in the fucking work and getting my brain in order getting my brain in order forcing myself to do the things that I want to be doing the everything that I'm putting out into the world are things that I actively want to be doing and I'm not because I am terrible at motivating myself and I am terrible at holding myself accountable to myself I can hold myself accountable to others but not to myself so I've decided today is day one um, and I made a little, I made, I adjusted that board behind me, the one on the wall, not on the door, to kind of break down my core tasks for the day that tell me a day has been completed. Um, so I need to read, I need to write, I need to do my daily pages, which is from the Artist Way book. And I don't do my daily pages like the exact way that this book kind of breaks it down. I had a really hard time with the open-ended concept of just taking what's in your brain and dumping it. There was too much and I couldn't organize it like in a fashion to actually get it out. So it kind of just like because there was so much it just created a blockage so nothing came out instead. It was all just kind of like white noise like rattling at the front of my head trying to get out but unable to get out. I pull in my daily tarot pull so I need to do my daily pages and my daily tarot pull every day. So I also want to do movement of some capacity. Now I say movement because we're going into the colder months so like right now Bug and I have been walking almost every day um, but it doesn't have to be walking especially because I have chronic pain um, from pretty gnarly arthritis so sometimes walking is really bad at making all that worse so when I say movement I mean it could be a walk it could be yoga it could be it could be any sort of movement that is going to make my body feel like grounded and centered and good in whatever condition it is in that day um, I also want to be doing education every single day. Um, right now I am in a developmental editing course and I feel like I'm falling behind. Um, that's, that's a lie. I know I'm falling behind because I'm not prioritizing it and I need to be and I want to be. And then finally I am saying I need to do one business task a day. That it just one. Just one. That's totally manageable. Like if I'm having like a shit day, that only means like, oh, just prep one post. Like it's, it's just one task a day. And I feel like all of these things combined are really going to help push me in the right direction. Um, and I just need to hold the, the whole the whole reason that I'm doing this as 75 days in particular instead of just like a daily routine is because I tried to do it as a daily routine and I couldn't hold myself accountable. So I'm hoping doing it as like a little game 
kind of thing will help hold me accountable. Um, I also do want to say I don't I don't really know what the rules are in terms of the actual 75 hard challenge because every time I tried to look at it it was super like fat phobic. Like every every person that I tried to look into it with was like just inherently fat phobic and unpleasant to watch. Um, <laughs> So I was probably just not looking at the right people like they were just like the people that were coming up first and of course that's what you get when you look at things that are coming up first. Um, but I am accounting for what I call three autism days because some days my between my autism and my chronic pain I, it, everything the the disabilities do be disabling. So I'm accounting for three of those. If more happen, I mean more happen. Uh, again, disa disabilities really do be disabling sometimes. So, but with that, I need to finish getting ready and then I need to leave for work. So, wish me luck. Good morning, Krusty Crew. It is Saturday. It is way later than I wanted it to be, but we were just snuggling me and bug we were just snuggling in bed and she was so very warm and i just couldn't help myself so tattoo progress today is the last day of today's vlog um and today is day two of my 75 hard challenge i did not succeed yesterday um i did have some extenuating circumstances um that just kind of punched me in the face yesterday but that's okay. Um, I got more than half of it done, honestly speaking. So this is just something that's kind of going to happen a little bit. And I just have to acknowledge like when things are kind of taken out of my hands a little bit. And yesterday there were two events that were just kind of taken out of my hand. Bug is playing with a toy right now. Um, so I am making myself a glass of tea or a cup of tea right now. Um, and we are going to do my daily tarot, which I'm not going to show y'all really because it's personal. It's personal. Um, I do need to re-up Morgan's offering. So I do need to go clean out this cup and re-up the offering. Other than that, today I just have a ton of work to do, honestly speaking. Um, and I do want to finish Little Rot by Quick Amezzy today um, and start up another book. And I just want to be a little bit kind to myself today because I do have a dinner that I need to go to that I'm not looking forward to. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at today. So I'm going to go clean out the Morgan's Offering Cup and then do my daily pull, do my daily pages, and then we can get started on our day. Okay, hi, hello. It is still Saturday and it is 1.41 p.m. My house is clean, I have been showered, um, I had lunch, and I just finally finished Little Rot by Quick Game Mezzi. Yet again, they have written a five-star book for me. This is truly kind of to die for for me. So so I have read the vast majority of their work. I started with Freshwater, which still haunts me to this day. It's just like the most incredible book and I've wanted to reread it for a long time and I can genuinely say that I have enjoyed all of their books after Freshwater, um, but not like this. This is now my second favorite book of theirs of all time. So we are following Ahmed, Kalu, Oya, um, Saraya, Ama, and um, Ijebu. No, I'm I'm forgetting I'm forgetting her name, even though she was one of my favorite characters. So we are following six people in Nigeria and we are literally following them over the course of like like two days like two days so it all starts out with this one bitch Ima who I, I'm positive that I'm pronouncing these names wrong or I'm just pronouncing them like the whitest way possible and it sounds better in my head than when it comes out of my mouth um so I apologize 
in advance. Um, but she decides to leave this dude Kalu because he doesn't want to marry her. And she is, they moved back to Nigeria from I believe like Texas or something and she is a woman of God. And he should be marrying her because they've been in a long-term relationship, like they're a vibe together, like she wants to be married and he's like, I'm just not ready for that yet. Like, I want to spend my life with you, but like, I'm just not ready for that. So it all starts with her saying, fuck it, I'm done, I'm leaving. And shit goes so incredibly awry from there, all because of one, like one high society um, sex party that Kalu's best friend Ahmed throws constantly. All of it goes wrong because of that one party because he decided to be sad and go to a sex party and shit went so completely awry. He fucked with the wrong dude and it it went horribly from there. Um, this, this is a book filled with triggers, especially if you have triggers um, regarding SA and sex work and stuff like that. Um, there's also quite a bit of death and violence. Um, so be warned that it's not for everyone, but it is for me. Oh my god, five stars. So, so messed up. And their writing is just gorgeous and the way that they structure their novels is just everything I could have asked for. It's so interesting. You're not following a continuous timeline so it's like each chapter kind of is told from a perspective of one of the people but you're just kind of going back and forth in the timeline and back and forth and back and forth and okay we've gotten to this point in Saturday with this character but now we've started with another character and we're hopping all the way back there. And it's just so interesting to witness how much can unfold in the course of like 24 hours, give or take. It's just wild. It's cuckoo bananas. And the ending, the ending was somehow so unsatisfying and so incredibly satisfying. Like this was not a happy ending, but it was a good ending. You know what I mean? Like it was, oh, oh. It was so good. I'm gonna have to get a physical copy at some point soon. I really need to get a copy of all of their books, honestly speaking. I only have physical copies of Freshwater and Bitter and I just need to own all of their books because I give all of their books either like a four or a five star. So, Little Rot by Quake and Mezzi. Five out of five stars. Everything I could have asked for obsessed. Next I will end up diving into Bury Your Gaze by Chuck Tingle. Um, super excited for this but first and foremost in terms of my 75 card challenge today I have read. I've done my daily pages. I have done my daily card poll. So that means today I still need to do movement. I need to write. I need to do a creative hobby and I need to do one business task. Oh, and I still need to do education. So I still have five things on my list of things that I need to do today. And it is 1.47 and I have a dinner to go to at 4.30. So I think I am going to pick up my pattern that I have for a little Cthulhu plushie. And I'm going to try to start doing like some test working on that, making sure I know all of the stitches that go into um, what I'm working on because my niece is having her fourth birthday on the 22nd and I have decided that I want to make her a little tiny Cthulhu and then for Christmas I, well for Yule, I want to make her a little Mothman um, because she has some pretty like gnarly sensory needs. So I just think like picking out a really nice yarn and having like the texture of crochet would be a really nice sensory experience for her. So let's go get started on that and that will be another task checked off my list for today.